Okay, hi there. In this revision video, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at the concept of the Laffer Curve. The Laffer Curve, which states that tax revenues will fall if tax rates increase above a certain point. Now, this is a theoretical idea, uh, beloved of uh, free market, free market leaning economists who genuinely believe that tax cutting is a means of stimulating work incentives, investment incentives and ultimately economic growth. These are economists who believe that if the government cuts the burden of taxation, that can stimulate growth and that in turn can contribute over time to, uh, to an increase in direct and indirect tax revenues flowing into the government. And the Laffer curve, I guess, is coming back into prominence uh, because of, uh, in the UK, for example, because of the decision by uh, the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, to, to raise a number of taxes as the government tries to improve the state of their own finances. As the economy emerges from the pandemic, we've had a record budget deficit and a national debt of above 100% of GDP. So national insurance is going up and uh, income tax allowances have been frozen and effectively an increase in tax. And the tax burden... And the tax burden measures the, all the taxes coming into the government, expresses a share of GDP. Well, that has now reached the highest level since the, uh, well, nearly 70 years, since the, so the early 50s. This chart on the screen at the moment is taken from the Institute of Fiscal Studies, and it tracks the path of the tax burden uh, since the late 1940s. So what does the Laffer curve purport to show, well, it's, it, is, it is a supposed relationship between economic activity and the rate of taxation. And it suggests there might be, and I emphasise that in bold, <laughs> it might be an optimum tax rate overall, which maximises the amount of money coming into the government in the form of revenue. The Laffer curve effect takes its name from the economist Art or Arthur Laffer, who developed the Laffer Curve based on the economic principle that people will adjust their behaviour in the face of the incentives created by tax rates. And here we see former President Trump handing Art Laffer a Congressional Medal of Honour. And in typical Trump style, he says, I've heard and said of the Laffer Curve for many years in the Wharton School of Finance. Uh, it's a very important thing that you've done, Art, very important. Forgetting, perhaps, that Trump graduated from Wharton in 1968 whereas Laffer developed the theory, in, uh, I think we're told, in 19, the mid-1970s. But we'll leave the president, the former president, to his own devices. Now, if you have to draw and explain the Laffer curve on the internet, there's various versions of it. Uh, I prefer to, to put a, a version with the tax revenue on the y-axis and the tax rate as a percentage on the x-axis, but it doesn't really matter. You can choose whichever way you want to show it. And this is how I tend to draw the Laffer curve. I tend to ignore the fact that at zero tax rates there's no revenue and at 100% tax rates there's a perfect disincentive to, to pay tax. It's pretty obvious to most people, so I don't draw that in the diagram. Uh, but it suggests that if we start off with a tax rate of T1% overall, you might get to R1 in revenue. Ultimately, increasing the burden of tax from T1 to T2 causes revenues to go up. But there might well be some sort of optimal tax rate of T3 which maximises the total amount that, that's collected in tax. Now, this idea of optimality, the idea that it's the peak of a curve, now it's not necessarily the main reason why you tax income, wealth and spending to maximise the revenue. There are other reasons behind taxation, including changing the behaviour of firms and individuals. But if you, if you believe there's an optimal tax rate, Laffer curve theorists then argue that increasing increasing the tax rate from T3 to T4 uh, can lead to a reduction in revenues. Hence the idea that you should cut taxes from T4 to T3 to increase revenue. And the debate really goes back again. Art Laffer is supposed to have influenced the tax policies of Reagan. Um, tax cuts were popularised in the idea that uh, that tax cuts could actually trickle down and increase work incentives and uh, risk entrepreneurial risk-taking, and actually increase total revenues. And why might total tax revenues fall, for example, if, we, if the tax rate increases? So why might revenues go down if you increase the burden of tax? Well, there's a number of plausible explanations. Firstly, increased rates of tax avoidance. 
So if, uh, if the tax rates go up, there's a greater incentive rationally to seek out any tax allowances, tax reliefs that you might be able to find. Employ a tax lawyer, for example, to find various tax deductions that you might be able to take advantage of. There's also, well, tax avoidance, by the way, is legal, whereas tax evasion is illegal. And tax evasion is the non-declaration of tax, uh, tax liability in terms of your income and wealth, sometimes called the hidden or the shadow uh, economy. And there might also be a problem in terms of higher taxes at the margin, causing some people to stop searching for work. So you might, you might link higher taxes with an increase in economic inactivity. And if one country raises their tax rates above others, uh, then there could be a brain drain effect where some obviously highly skilled, perhaps younger, high income people might decide, t decide to leave a country or move their money offshore in order to avoid paying taxation. Of course, tax avoidance is one of those big issues. It's one of those issues that just won't go away. And if you were to successfully tackle tax avoidance, let's take our original Laffer curve. If you were to reduce tax avoidance at all levels, individuals, corporations in particular, then you might be able to shift the amount of tax the government gets at each tax revenue. And this is quite a good diagram. I'd bring the Laffer curve in, by the way, uh, to a question evaluating tax avoidance. So the scale of tax avoidance is uh, huge. I mean, nobody knows quite how big it is, but um, according to a paper published by Professor Gabriel Zuckman about three or four years ago, uh, firms in the United States booked more profits in Ireland, a low tax country, than in China, Japan, Germany, France and Mexico combined. The UK is expected to lose somewhere between six and ten billion pounds of corporate tax revenues every year. Uh, the OECD, which is the leading sort of organisation for economically advanced nations, they estimate that somewhere between 4 and 10% of global corporate tax revenues is lost due to avoidance. And that's you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. M much of this revenue would have accrued to governments in developing countries. So what do we think? What, can we evaluate the usefulness of the Laffer curve idea? I am slightly sceptical of it. Uh, but my, my economics is mainly Keynesian rather than free market tax cutting. I can see there's some plausible explanations for the Laffer curve. Uh, but one, one of the points I would make is it's very hard to know exactly what the optimum rate of tax actually is for any given economy. It depends on where you are in your stage of development and in terms of what you're using the tax system for. Many low income countries, middle income countries, they don't tax enough. And therefore, they're not generating enough revenue to pay for essential public goods and services. There's not much evidence that the top rate income tax is a barrier to inward migration of skilled labour. Uh, people come, the push and pull factors affecting labour migration are often much more significant than simply what the tax rates are in different countries. And the idea that cutting taxes stimulates work incentives can be challenged. Many people in work are on fixed hours. Uh, or they're on zero hours contracts. So the tax rate on their income has little direct effect on people's work incentives. Indeed, for people at the top end, if you cut taxes, they may take more leisure instead of work, that uh, they have a high income elasticity of demand for leisure, and given the chance they've already reached their target income, they'll work fewer hours and uh, take more leisure if tax rates are cut. I think there's quite a strong, plausible Keynesian explanation for the Laffer curve, in the sense that if you cut taxes, disposable income goes up and people spend a proportion of that. That drives higher consumer spending and aggregate demand, which increases tax revenues from things like um, excise duties and, and VAT and corporate profits. So tax cutting can raise revenue, and there's a very strong Keynesian explanation for it. And cutting taxes, which is often the mantra of Laffer Curve supporters, essentially supporters argue that governments should avoid tax increases because they cut revenue, uh, but they should reduce tax revenues to increase revenue. Well, that's fine. That's a, that's a plausible uh, rationale. But those tax cuts might increase revenue. OK, let's accept the premise of the Laffer curve. But they could easily conflict with other objectives, such as relative poverty and inequality. So cuts in top rate taxes, for example... Uh, might well increase the so-called Gini coefficient, which is a measure of income and in income inequality uh, across uh, across a population. 
So the Laffer curve is a useful idea. It's an interesting one to bring into your analysis and evaluation. My instinct is that many students throw in the diagram into their answers without really thinking about it. They just draw a diagram to try and they think they're going to get some analysis marks. Whilst it's plausible, uh, there is actually limited empirical evidence that an optimum tax rate in the UK, for example, exists for maximising tax revenue. But the Laffer curve will continue to be popular in A-level economics and IB economics answers. And you can kind of see why. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Laffer curve.